Well, God bless you and welcome to the Voice of Deliverance. I'm your host, Bishop Robert Page, and we're so blessed that you joined us and we are so excited about what God is doing. So, uh, you know, I'm here today with my beautiful wife and co-host, Evangelist M.G. Page, and we're just so excited to, that you have joined us today. God bless you. God bless you. We are the Voice of Deliverance the International Media Outreach Ministry of Kingdom Life International Fellowship, where we are training the called and equipping the chosen. We want you to know that we are here for you. <laughs> Dial us at 800-548-1748, and we will be happy to stand in the gap with you concerning your prayer needs. As I always said, prayer changes things, prayer changes people, and prayer changes circumstances. Call us, 800-548-1748, and we'll be happy to pray with you. Amen. Today, we want to talk about a subject that is near and dear to our hearts. And as we have been in ministry over the years, God has blessed us with the wonderful, awesome honor and privilege to be servants of His. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we want to remind you, people of God, of that to be a servant of the Most High God is a privilege and an honor. It is not something to be taken lightly. That's Glory right. to God. When God has placed his hand on your life, that is so significantly important. Glory to God. And so today we, we want to explore the topic of kingdom covenant connections. While in ministry and going to and fro, and the Lord has blessed us to fellowship with various churches and leaders and kingdom siblings, we have learned Quite a, quite a bit over the years. We still yes. have yet to know and learn. But what the Lord has been pulling on our heartstrings about as of late is the importance of kingdom covenant connections. I want y'all to hear us tonight. Kingdom covenant connections are not just friendships. Kingdom covenant connections are not just relationships that are put together uh, by man. No. Kingdom covenant relationships are God-ordained unions that he has knitly joined together for the purpose of destiny in the earth. Amen. Amen. So that his perfect will can be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. So what does that mean? When God, where God is trying to take you and in accordance with what he has planned for your life, everybody can't go. That's right. <laughs> Glory to God. Bishop, help me. <laughs> <laughs> well, today we have uh, a, a story that we're going to um, talk about today mm -hmm. in the Bible. You know, that we can we can find every uh, every life example, everything that you can that you need help for in life. It's right here in the Word of God. Yes. And so today we're going to look at a story in the Old Testament in the book of First Samuel, chapter eighteen. And it reads as this, beginning at verse 1. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul, the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And, so, and Saul took him that day and would let him go no more home, to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him and his own as his own soul. Mm -hmm. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him mm -hmm. and gave it to David and his garments even to his sword and to his bow and to his girdle. Mm -hmm. Verse 5 says and David went out whithersoever Saul went, whithersoever Saul sent him, and behaved himself wisely. And Saul sent him over the men of war, and he was accepted mm -hmm. in the sight of the people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. My Lord, that listen, this story is, is, is so special. Every story in the Bible is, is special because it's the word of our Abba's mouth. It's the word of God's mouth. Amen. It's our life. But this story is a direct, is, is a correlation of kingdom covenant connections. 
Listen, beloved, you can't be connected to everything. Do you know that? Even whether whether you are uh, 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 where you need to be in Christ or not, we, we know even in a natural sense, water and oil don't mix. Mm-hmm. They, they, they won't merge together. There are certain ingredients and aspects of our lives that don't fit into the equation. Amen. And so when we look at this story of Jonathan and David, let's do a little bit of background first. David yes. was in a very peculiar position. Amen. He was handpicked by God to become the next king. Even while the present king was already in the seat. Yes. God had already disqualified Saul because of his disobedience. And David learned worship and war on the backside of the desert. Hallelujah. While he was being rejected and overlooked, come on, and ostracized mm-hmm. by his own family, yep. God already found favor in his servant yes. and said, that's the one I'm going to use to lead my people. Glory to God. And so now David finds himself in the palace. <laughs> mm. Some of you are being promoted even right now while you're going through hard trials and tribulation and tests. God is preparing you for promotion. I like that phrase, from the pit to the palace. Yes. <laughs> and so David now has found a friend in Jonathan who was Saul's son. Verse 1 tells us that Jonathan's soul was knit with the soul of David. Well, Any of you that, that know, you know, when we mom and them would crochet or, or knit fabrics together, there's a hook on that instrument or, or there's a way to utilize it so that knit or that yarn is wrapped around that instrument and it's plugged in and interwoven and pulled back out and wrapped around again. What does that mean? There's, there's no possible way for it to be easily disconnected. Just like the three strand cord. That's Amen. right. That's right. What do you have to say about that, Bishop? Their souls were knit. They were knit. You know, and that was, it's a very powerful uh, analogy because you know I know that the Bible also says that uh, three strand cord mm. is not easily broken. broken. Why? Because it's like a rope. Mm. If you if you go to the hardware store and you will get some rope for a particular task that you're doing and you look at it you'll see that it's not just one strand it's like a braid. Yes. I'm sure that you can relate to that. Oh yes. Braiding you know the daughter your daughter's hair and yes. you can see how how uh, it's is strengthened when there's multiple strands wow. woven together my goodness i like that analogy because there, there are different types of braids there's there's the three you know and the four ladies you yes. know what i mean and some men amen but uh, <laughs> with it's it's a it's a wrapping around and yes. interlocking that is so vitally important because when god does that there's no stopping you when God connects you, when, when he pieces the, the, the puzzle together, there's a strength, there's a bond that has the anointing and power of God on it to withstand the tests that come, amen, right. on the road to destiny. All right, and then it says that in verse 1 also, Jonathan loved David as his own soul. Wow. Oh, Lord. That's powerful. That is powerful. Where do we, we find that commandment where Jesus tells us that we are to love our neighbor mm-hmm. as we love ourselves. What does that mean? That's the, I think that was the 11th commandment. <laughs> yeah. he, said, he said that. He said, this commandment I leave unto you, that yes. you love your neighbor as yourself. Is that right? right? Yes, he yes. did. Yes, he did. And Jonathan did that. The Bible says Jonathan loved David as his own soul. I wonder if we're doing that in the body of Christ mm. today. Are we loving one another as we love ourselves? Or are we selfish? Are we looking on our own needs and what we can get from people? Operating in the spirit of opportunism. Mm. Get what I can and uh, uh, manipulating other people. Using them to our own advantage. My Lord, that's not the love of God. 
Praise God. And when you're in covenant kingdom connections, kingdom covenant connections, there's a dying, there's a humility that comes because you want God to be the center of that bond, that relationship, that sisterhood, that brotherhood, that uh, spiritual parent to spiritual child, uh, in those relationships, amen, in the kingdom. We die to ourselves so that the perfect will of God can be made manifest through us for his right. purpose in Jesus' name. You know, uh, we were talking earlier, covenant relationships, they have no strings attached. No strings. No, nope. that means there's no, we're not expecting anything of anybody else that we wouldn't expect of ourselves. Yes. You know, there's no strings. There's nothing uh, hidden. I'm not expecting you to do this for me while I do that. Yes. We don't, we, we don't do that in the kingdom. Amen. The Bible even says, as you were speaking on that, Bishop, the scripture that comes to mind is, Greater love hath no man than this, that he laid that's down right. his life that's powerful. for his friend. If that's not dying to yourself, I don't know what is. That's powerful because, you know, we don't only use that scripture in the church. Hmm. You know who else uses that scripture? Who? The, the military. Wow, yes. They, they have it. that in... Every military base. <laughs> yes. You know Lord. why? Because they understood that they need one another. My. And so they understood that when they go to war, they put they they believe in that. Yes. Because when they want to know that that person that's there with them, they have their back. My, my, mm -hmm. my, my, my. We're in a war, y'all. I'm so glad Holy Spirit had you say that. In the military. Listen, yes. we're in the army of the Lord where there's real fighting going on in the spirit. And you need covenant connections. You need mm -hmm. kingdom covenant connections and relationships. I don't want to be friends or in a, in a relationship with somebody that's not going to have my back in prayer. I don't want anybody on a battlefield with me that's not going to tell me I'm headed for trouble. Mm. Listen, you're about to step on a landmine. Nope. Sis, step back. Bro, step back. I don't want you to get hurt. And I should just say, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, we, we, we love each other because we love God That's right. and we want him to be glorified and when the love of God is involved oh my goodness we, we have we have a situation that's glory right. to God that you know that's that's, a, that's what you're when you say the love of God we mm -hmm. also have to remember that Jesus said that we are to love one another you know with our whole heart so oh. we're supposed to lo show that love that mm -hmm. agape love one to another yes you know, so that's that's very powerful right there that we love one another and and that's love that we just as like we were talking about when a man laid down his life for a friend mm. that's love man there ain't, ain't no better ain't no bigger love than that and there's only one example Ooh. that we can talk about that did that <laughs> <laughs> i believe his name was jesus j-e-s-u-s -E -S, jesus our did savior he and laid our down his life yes oh, he, he did ooh, yes he did <laughs> hallelujah we're so excited about him tonight because yes. he is the reason why we're here talking about kingdom covenant connections. Beloved, listen, before we go to break, we want you to stop and think about some of those connections that you have. Mm. These friendships, these relationships. Some of you are related to organizations, jobs, certain entities that are not conducive for where God is getting ready to take you. And you know what he's going to do? Bring out the scissors. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Let him do it because... You know, you don't want anybody that is connected to you to hold you back from where God has taken you. Amen. So that is very important. So, you know, we're going to come back in a minute and discuss this more, but uh, we'll be right back. God bless you. Welcome back to the Voice of Deliverance, and you know we're just discussing uh, covenant relationships and evaluating them, and we want to help you to evaluate and understand uh, covenant relationships and, and let you know that some relationships may need to be changed. So we're going to help you today with that today. Today we're looking at First Samuel chapter eighteen. And we're going to pick up where we left off at verse 3. And it reads that, Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. 
They made a covenant. Yes. <laughs> Listen, you know, it reminds me of when we were, we were younger children. And back in the day, we didn't know any better. But we used to play this game where, where thank God for Jesus and deliverance, okay? But we would play this game where they would uh, prick their finger. Your friend would prick their finger and you would prick your finger. Oh, and wow. then they would stick the fingers together and become blood brothers. Yes. That, that was some serious <laughs> serious stuff, yes. you know? And, and, but, but look at what Jonathan and David did. They made a covenant with one another. What is a covenant? A covenant is a legal binding contract. It is an oath. It's not like what we do today. We give our word and we lie and say we're going to do something and not do it. And sometimes it's not intentional. You know, I'll call you back. Give me a few minutes. I'll call you right back. And things happen. We get caught up. And that's something that I'm asking the Lord to help me to work on. Amen. Because it's so easy to get distracted. But when Jonathan and David made a covenant, my, 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 yeah. guess where else we make covenants? In mm. marriage. In marriage. We talked about that earlier. Bishop told us about that three-strand cord. Not that is not broken. easily broken. That's right. I believe that same principle applies to any kingdom covenant relationship. What God puts together, let no man interfere with and mess with. Because the judgment of God will come on you. You know why? Because what God puts together is for divine purpose. Yes. It is not for, for the community center, you know, Mickey Mouse playground circus. That's, that's not what this is. God's business is serious, kingdom, divine, holy business. Amen. Yes. And so the scripture said that they made a covenant. They made a pledge and a promise to one another. They, there was a genuine love there. Jesus warns us that in these last days, the love of many is going to wax cold. Mm -hmm. Beloved, you got to be careful of who you connect with. And or who you allow to connect with you. That's right. Hmm? That's right. That's true. And so, you know, that three-strand cord is very, very important. We use that a lot of times in marriage. When, when two people get married, you know, it's uh, three strands. Because there's only one way that uh, God can hold a marriage together. is uh, the three strand, which represent the husband... The wife, and then there's a third party. You know who that third party is? Yes, sir. It is our Lord Jesus. Right in the center. You need Him in that covenant. And we need Him in every covenant. Every godly covenant must have the Lord with us. Um, and just as He was talking about the, uh, the blood covenant, you know, that is a very powerful. And what I remember is that. Um, in the Indian, cowboy and Indian days, that's how they made their covenant. Mm -hmm. They actually did not just it, put a mm. little prick, prick there. They took a knife mm. and sliced their hand mm. from one end to another. And they let that blood run from one man to another man. Mm. And that was their covenant relationships. That's how they made contracts back in those days with uh, you know, the cowboys and the Indians and the white man. And the, and the Indian. But that's very powerful because guess what? They wasn't going to break that covenant. Oh, no. That was not, they, once they did that, because guess what? What happened was there was a scar that was left. Mm. So every time they look at their hand, they said they would remember the covenant that took place. My God. You know, I know somebody else that has a scar My, in their hand. you getting me worked up. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, boy. There, there was... There was nails pierced. Ooh. There was a, some nail pierced hands Lord, that have, have a scar in them today. Thank you, Jesus. And those represent a covenant that was was placed with from God to man. Mm. Hallelujah. My God, my God. Lord, hallelujah. Help us. <laughs> help us get Is that through. on your notes? <laughs> no, it's not. Glory be to God. But but the scar. Yes. The scar. And Jesus didn't have just one scar. Mm -hmm. My God. The, 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 the crown of thorns. Yes. Oh, Jesus. They beat him all night long. Snatched the beard off his face. Wow. My Lord. Scar Come on. Pierced him in his side. Uh, 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 the stripes mm. on his back. My God. We're uh, we going to have to get into that on another episode because yes. there's so much to get into with that. But just, let's just think about that covenant. There's mm -hmm. going to be a cut on you. 
That's what covenant also means, yes. you know. Cut. The root of that word covenant means cut. Meaning, you got to sacrifice something mm -hmm. for real kingdom covenant connections. That's right. It's not about you. You are your brother's keeper. Oh, we heard huh? that. I remember that. Hallelujah. What can I do for mm -hmm. you? What do you need? The strong bear the infirmities of the weak. Yes. Glory be to God. Oh, my Lord. So guess what? That covenant is binding. That's what Bishop was speaking about, about when the Indians and cowboys would cut their hand. That contract wasn't just, okay, I'm going to sign my name on the dotted mm -hmm. line and whatever happened, happened. No. You were bound by that yes. oath for life. For life. Amen. It was a legal document that could not be altered. It was irrevocable. Aren't you glad that the ooh, the contract that Jesus, <laughs> oh God, sealed in his blood is irrevocable? It sure is. Hallelujah. That it cannot be changed or altered? Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. All right. So in verse 4, would you read that for us, yes. Bishop? Mm -hmm. We see here that in verse 4, And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. and gave it to David. And his garments, even to his sword, and to his bow, and to his bow, I believe, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and to his girdle. Mm, listen, as Bishop was reading that, and I didn't see this before, Jesus was stripped of his robe. Mm -hmm. He sure was. You know who else was stripped of their robe? Joseph. Joseph had a coat of many colors. Listen, mm -hmm. when the favor of God is on you, some of the relationships you have are going to turn topsy-turvy. Mm. And it doesn't mean that you're to run from those relationships. Everybody needs a Judas to get them. <laughs> from Gethsemane to Golgotha to the place of glory. Yes. So there are some connections that are not always conducive. Or, mm. or let me, let, let's put it this way. They're not comfortable. But you need them as the sandpaper to smooth out the rough edges. My Lord, Joseph had his brothers to help him build character. He did. Uh, yes. Even though they turned on him, isn't that right? <laughs> yes, God will use anybody. Yes. He sure will. He'll use them even though they think that they're being used of God. <laughs> and if they turn the other way and, and you know try to do something that's against that covenant, you know, God will still use them. <laughs> yes, Romans eight twenty eight. It sure does. All things work together for the good to them who love God. And? To those who are the called uh -huh. according to His according purpose. According to His purpose. So when you're called according to His purpose, there are some things that He's going to do on that potter's wheel that's going to pound you, and it's not going to feel too good. But trust Him even in those relationships because He has a design. He has a design. You would think, well, Lord, why would you put Judas in the crew? Why mm -hmm. would you do that? Judas was necessary. That's right. Just like Penina was necessary with Hannah. We need somebody to provoke us. He had a purpose. Oh, come on. To get to the next place in God. <laughs> Bless the Lord. So it was something you read in verse 4. Mm -hmm. Jonathan stripped himself. What? Sure. What did it say? Of the robe. Of his own robe. Robe that he, was upon him. Mm -hmm. That was upon. He took his clothes off. Yes. Uncovered himself and covered his brother. Yes. You know how we do that? In prayer, walking in love and forgiveness and long suffering one to another. What else did he do? He said he took off his 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 robe, his yes. garments, his sword, his weaponry, his, his sword, oh, uh -huh. his bow. Mm -hmm. Listen. You got to be willing to fight for your brother. We're soldiers. We sing that song all the time. Soldier in the <laughs> army of Lord. You know, we, 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 I don't mind dying, but yeah, but you have a comrade. Yes. You are your brother's keeper. You, 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 I'm going to give you my weapons so that you can be successful. I'm going to push you. I'm going to push you forward so that you can get to the place in God that you need to be in. My God, what you make happen for somebody else, God will make happen for you. Father, in Jesus' name, please deliver us from the cutthroat <laughs> spirit where we can love on each other the way we're supposed to in That's the kingdom. Right. That's right. Amen. That's right. We need to love one another mm -hmm. just as we love our own family. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, I, you know, I was just thinking about mm. 
I have this saying, I say it quite often, I have a brother and I call him my brother from another mother. <laughs> and boy, I tell you what, this brother of mine, we are closer than any of my family members. Yes. He's only, the only closer person in my, relation, in my personal relationships is my wife. Glory to God. And boy, I tell you what, I have family members, you know, that, that uh, should be close to me. But he has a special place for, in my life. And because God put him in my life. And so he has a, he has a covenant relationship with me and me with him. That if any, any, either one of us need anything, we're there for one another. Just like brothers should be. Amen. You will find that the family of God is your real family. That's right. Beloved one. Your family is not <laughs> those that are biologically attached to you because of your right. bloodline. Mm -hmm. But the blood of Jesus connects us That's right. into kingdom covenant connections. In fact, Jesus said that one day his family was standing outside and they came in and said, Jesus, your mother and your brothers are outside mm -hmm. looking for you. He said, who's that? That's right. <laughs> who sure is did. my mother and my mm -hmm. brothers? Him who does the will of my father. Yes. That's my family. Sure is. Glory to God. Bishop, you want to share a little bit on that? You know, um, even when when Jesus was being crucified mm. and <laughs> Jesus looked down and he was looking for his boys, wasn't nobody there but one. one. And it was who? John. John. Yes. You know what? John got the blessing. Mm -hmm. And John passed... Jesus passed John, uh, his relationship from, with John on to his mother. Yes. And he let her know, listen, that I had a special relationship with John. And he, he said, woman, behold thy son. My God. He sure did. Another kingdom covenant connection. Beloved, we want to pray with you today that you will do what, what we, what we um, said earlier examine reevaluate mm -hmm. lay your covenant connection before god and be sure that they're true kingdom covenant connections because where god is taking you everybody can't go that's right glory to god you want to lead them okay i'll let you do that today thank you <laughs> glory to god this is on your heart go ahead <laughs> father god in jesus you. name i just give you glory right now for each and every person under the sound of yes. our voice father we decree and declare the disbanding of demonic relationships and ravenous wolves in sheep's clothing posing as kingdom covenant connections Amen. we thank you for demolishing every demonic intention of the enemy in relationships in the lives of your people we give you glory for the blood of jesus that yes. sanctions it and seals it in jesus name amen amen call the number on your screen right now if you need prayer and you know it is just a blessing to have you to join us and you know what we look forward to seeing you next time on the voice of deliverance kingdom God blessings bless you.